Welcome to Budget 2024 uh, here and Entrepreneur as we do a review of the budget. Uh, for as many years I have seen particularly the BJP government presenting the budget. This one is a very different in terms of how this budget was approached. It's a very populist budget, of course. But more than that, it is also a budget that I have seen which is more focused on employment versus entrepreneurship. Um, you know, everything, all kind of SOPs that are being given are being given for better employment. Uh, opportunities. In fact, probably uh, we have seen a great moment um, and in some entrepreneurial nuances which I've been seeing in terms of how people are investing in stock markets. Uh, we've also seen some kind of uh, uh, you know, stops or stop gaps being put by the current government over there in terms of raising the short-term capital gains tax, uh, which will probably uh, want to dissuade uh, people to actually make too many investments in the capital market, perhaps just to stop the overheating of the market, which we have been seeing currently. Also, the market, uh, which I really like, uh, is that it brings great focus on killing um, and a very important need for a country where unemployment rate is rising and uh, with the kind of population, youth population that we have. It's an extremely important aspect to take into view, which the government has done in 2024 budget as well. Um, Certainly, I think on from a startup side, the angel tax getting abolished is a really big deal. It has been a, a sort of a, it has been hampering mm -hmm. a lot of investments, which otherwise would come much more easily uh, into the startup sector. But at the same time, I feel the problem was never really the angel investments, but really the larger side investments. So I think some kind of uh, FDI uh, sort of leeway that has also been brought into the uh, the budget has will also bring a lot of foreign direct investment in the form of uh, uh, you know large ticket VC investments or private equity investments in times to come, um, and of course finally I would also like to uh, call it a very MSME friendly budget because it is the raising of the mudra loans and also uh, the credit guarantee schemes that the government is bringing at par would certainly give the impetus uh, that the MSME sector has not been enjoying for the last few years. Uh, so it's certainly going to become uh, bring an ease of business for the MSME sector. Uh, we joined here by a lot of experts who are going to share their views. Uh, solar installation happening. And the, same, the government is also extremely concerned about, uh, you know, climate change and how uh, energy and, uh, uh, you know, how they want to make sure that in, in states particularly, which are more prone to floods, etc., um, you know, how we can do much better. So I would love to start with Dr. Rahul Valvarkar on this, uh, as to what do you think, uh, Dr. Rahul, in terms of your views on the budget? Sure. Thank you very much, uh, first of all, Ritu, for uh, inviting us. Uh, so I'm representing India Energy Storage Alliance, which uh, focuses on primarily uh, four areas. So one is stationary energy storage technologies, uh, which includes advanced batteries as well as uh, uh, long duration storage technologies such as uh, pumped hydro. Uh, but I think there is an echo coming from Sandeep Ji. Yeah, Sandeep may I request everybody else to please kindly if they can go on mute. Uh, so we'll have five minutes each to be allotted to all. Uh, you know, have your talk in five minutes and then we will give it to the rest of the panel. And in the meantime, please rest can keep themselves on mute. Sure. Thank you very much, Ritu. Uh, so, uh, as I said, India Energy Storage Alliance focuses on areas related to advanced energy storage technologies, e-mobility, green hydrogen, and then associated manufacturing supply chain, as well as uh, skill development. Uh, so, from this point, uh, we have a lot of positive uh, announcements coming in from the uh, uh, budget, uh, especially the focus on skilling and employment uh, because especially the clean energy transition is an area uh, where it is not that we have a lot of uh, skilled manpower ready or uh, skilled persons uh, readily available. Uh, we need to do a significant upskilling of both existing uh, employees as well as uh, attract youth uh, in this sector. Uh, so the initiatives which government has announced, including uh, 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 training of uh, 20 lakh youth over five years, uh, setting up of 1,000 industrial training institutes uh, uh, with course content which is aligned to industry is very much uh, uh, need of the time. Uh, as the India Energy Storage Alliance, we have IESA Academy, which has already been partnering with various academic institutions as well as more than 150 member 
companies for addressing this. So uh, we think uh, this announcement will uh, take such initiatives to the next stage. Uh, also, I think some of the uh, announcements related to uh, internships, uh, those could be again a welcome step because it is not just about the one year uh, internship, but having uh, uh, the young uh, engineers or other professionals getting trained at uh, companies uh, uh, that will open up other opportunities for uh, uh, these people either continue in the same companies if they are performing well as well as uh, uh, possibly look for other opportunities because sector is growing really rapidly uh, we also welcome the special incentives for women specific skilling program as a india energy storage alliance for last four years we have been running isa women in energy initiative uh, so as part of that uh, we feel that especially in the clean energy sector uh, there is a need for highlighting uh, uh, women participation so i think through this uh, program we can uh, achieve that uh, we also welcome the announcement for specific support for pumped hydro storage, uh, which is a key step for supporting long duration energy storage technologies. Uh, again, as IESA, we support all form of storage technologies, so pumped hydro is part of that. Uh, but we also uh, expect that some of these supports will be extended to uh, other forms of long duration storage technologies in coming years. Uh, also, uh, uh, there is a very clear focus on uh, support for hard to abate uh, sectors through both improving energy efficiency as well as adopting clean energy. Uh, we have seen just in last one month, multiple RE plus storage to tenders, which have shown uh, sub four rupee uh, tariff for uh, solar or solar plus wind plus storage projects, uh, which provides firm and dispatchable renewable energy. So having this support for uh, path for faster decarbonization for uh, some of the industrial sectors, that could also give a lot of uh, push for uh, RE plus storage projects uh, for these sectors. Uh, we also saw very specific uh, uh, initiative related to critical minerals, uh, including uh, VCDs for importing uh, uh, minerals and say, uh, making India a hub for uh, processing these minerals for the battery supply chain. That is a welcome step. As the India Energy Storage Alliance, we have set a vision that India should have at least 550 gigawatt hour of advanced battery manufacturing by 2035. And through India Battery Manufacturing and Supply Chain Initiative, we are looking at in the uh, supply chain is not only serving the Indian Giga factories, but also supplying the other Giga factories, uh, especially non-China Giga factories. Uh, so I think this uh, specific recognition for critical minerals, both from raw materials as well as including recycling as part of that that is a, a very big a very big boost for the uh, industry uh, also uh, nirmala ji announced that uh, government is monitoring rationalization of import duties uh, based on domestic manufacturing capacities that was again one of the requests from iesa to finance ministry because there are significant investments being made in india uh, but at the same time, the scale of uh, those investments as compared to uh, uh, existing manufacturing capacity in China or some of the other countries is uh, are not yet there. So for at least next three to five years, uh, the domestic industry and the new manufacturing which is being set up uh, will require some support. And uh, by rationalizing of import duties as the domestic manufacturing capacity increases, uh, uh, that will be a welcome boost and that will address some of the concerns from uh, uh, many of the companies who are investing significantly in these areas. Uh, these are some of the key points uh, I wanted to highlight. If there are any additional questions, happy to we'll, take we'll it up. Come uh, back in to you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Dr. Rahul, for putting uh, emphasis about how energy and uh, storage, for particularly for the mobility markets, is very important. We will come back to you with some questions. I also see, uh, see that Sandeep Bhamar has joined us. He was earlier also. So, Sandeep, if you can share your views, please. We are giving three to four minutes to everyone. So, kindly request you to be precise and put the points out which you really think are meaningful from the budget's point of view. Thanks, Ritu, for, uh, for having me. Um, as you correctly pointed out, you know, for... Um, a general audience, the budget can be considered populist because it had a much broader appeal. But for somebody like us who is a climate VC uh, and investing from outside of India, we saw several welcome announcements in this budget, which we think will go a long way in increasing international investor confidence in the startup ecosystem. And of course, the first thing was the removal of the angel tax, uh, which obviously was a 
big sword hanging on all of us. So by eliminating this tax, we feel that the government will promote innovation and they'll also increase domestic as well as international investment and streamline, streamline you know, early stage financing. So in an environment where several countries are actually vying for pole position to create a globally recognized startup hub, I think India has, uh, you know, basically done a good job to strengthen its own position by eliminating um, uh, the angel tax. And of course, that was something that uh, a lot of VCs were looking at very, very closely. Uh, from a climate perspective, I think what was good was that there was obviously uh, a clear framework that was, uh, you know, established in connection with the taxonomy for green investments uh, being proposed. And again, why I think this is great is it will attract more, you know, capital into climate friendly projects. It will ensure greater transparency and it will also foster confidence among investors. So what this does is it actually underscores India's commitment to addressing climate change and also promoting environmentally responsible financial practices. Um, sure. The other thing that actually I thought was excellent, uh, but this is more from a climate sort of adaptation point of view, not necessarily from a mitigation point of view, is the announcement on nuclear energy and the fact that India is going to be working on setting up these Bharat reactors. Um, as somebody who's been intimately involved in investing in uh, nuclear fusion startups in the United States, I think, uh, you know, this collaboration will go a very long way uh, in creating, uh, you know, energy security for India, also lowering its carbon emissions, and more importantly, putting India at the forefront of, you know, sophisticated nuclear technology. Um, the alliance obviously will promote long-term growth and also provide a reliable energy solution for the future. But more importantly, um, I think, uh, you know, nuclear fusion, which was one area where India was not effectively, uh, you know, top of the mind recall country, this will now go a long way in, in establishing that. And then finally, I'd say, uh, the, even though this is not in connection directly with climate, the fact that the government has decided to announce a 1,000 crore VC fund uh, for investment in space tech will encourage, obviously, investments in space tech in a big way. It will obviously you know, improve the entrepreneurial en environment uh, by, main, by way of uh, you know, sort of catalyzing finance to propel technological development and economic expansion. Uh, for me, it's a statement by the government that they're committed to a vibrant startup ecosystem and will project India as a worldwide center of innovation. But more importantly, what I also think it will do is it will create a platform for future such funds to be set up on in areas where the payback period for investors is very, very long. Uh, space tech is, is a very long drawn investment uh, area. And hopefully, uh, you know, this is the first of many other, uh, you know, VC uh, pockets of allocation that the government effectively sets up to encourage uh, investment in technologies that have longer payback periods. Sure. So, that goes without saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we certainly headed towards Mars. So, I think that the government is clearly establishing putting up a colony there sometime soon. So, I think the yeah. VC fund is probably <laughs> in lines with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Akshay Mehrotra, uh, who is the co founder of Five, uh, who's joined us over here to share his thoughts with us. Thank you, Ritu. So I think a very interesting budget, uh, I think from three specific areas. The first one was focusing on the youth. And if you look at the Modi and economics and saying that elections were tougher for them, the area has come in very clear. They need to create jobs, they need to upgrade skilling, they need to focus on getting new jobs created. And of course, creating in the second slab change uh, of let's say 10 to 12 lakhs uh, where they reduce the taxes for people. It really comes to say that they want to focus on young people and pushing middle India at a younger age to earn more and work more to upgrade their skill sets. The second area was already on the startup. Uh, we're, a, we're a startup, we're a fintech lender. Um, I think the angel tax abolition is going to fuel more of the startup community. And if I look at three areas, uh, open up further, uh, solar rooftop uh, housing becomes very interesting. In fact, we have just launched the solar rooftop financing as a new vertical. And I think that's going to get really beneficial now. MSME and other categories are also opening up, uh, which means there's going to be much more gains coming in that category. Um, similarly, if I look at uh, what's happening uh, on the large, the capital gains 
increase will affect exits for many of the startup community coming in. Uh, I believe um, uh, exits would be tougher for VC funds and let's say early stage investors which come in, but let's see how that really when that goes on in the future. And the last part is really about the opportunities getting created by the government by spending more. First is the commitment on large cap spending, then creation of, let's say, more mudra loans coming in, more credit guarantee schemes for MSME. I think cash flows for mid-level companies, 50 to 2 crore rupee revenue companies will go up. They'll get more opportunities to create more um, businesses. And I think the government is following suit on what they want to really focus that can we build a more self-reliant economy? Can we get more make in India? Can we get uh, more skilling done? And can, let's say, a combination of startups and MSME really fuel the next growth which India needs and going beyond the top houses in the country to build larger companies? I think that's getting very clearly uh, the path coming in. And what I really believe is that if the economy continues to have the same growth rate, uh, many new businesses will get created. I think uh, clean energy, climate uh, is definitely one big focus area. Uh, and as well as skilling across the board, creating more jobs will really help build the economy better. Sure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Akshay, for bringing that uh, view in. Uh, we also have a big year from... Uh... Brian Thornton, who's joined us here today, Vivek, um, you know, the populist budget. And I think probably in some ways, I'll say that uh, BJP is doing the same thing that they were exactly accusing what the opposition of doing uh, during the election times, which is giving out a lot of free sops. You know, I, I really couldn't find the rationale for giving a one month salary to a first time employment um, as to what what kind of purpose that is going to really solve. I mean, providing employment is very important, but not sure about the salary part and then EPFs and so on. Uh, so it looks very, very populist to me. But what are your thoughts on it? And largely, of course, but I do feel that skilling, um, that they have the way they picked up and they want to put up hub and spoke models, I think that is of extreme importance, given how AI is looking to displace a lot of industries and, you know, probably hit the jobs which are very, very standard. Um, so what are your views on the budget? So uh, my view on the budget is that directionally, uh, the focus was on putting certain principles to say that this is long-term sustainable for long-term long sustainable growth, but they were a little light on the details. And uh, uh, that is, that's my immediate reaction in terms of the whole uh, budget. Uh, the positive part I saw was that there was a rationalization of tax rate from 40% to 35% for foreign companies. And that's something that the foreign banks in India have been looking for a long time. And they've been lobbying for a very long time on that. So that was a that was a positive, uh, positive piece. A lot of impact uh, from a financial services standpoint uh, that I actually saw from a sector perspective was more so, I would say that it was from infrastructure, MSME and affordable housing. Really, these three were the segments in terms of where I saw uh, a fair bit of positive investor sentiment actually coming in. We can expect increased deal activity in the affordable housing space, which anyways has been seen. Uh, but with this, uh, valuation premiums will, will exceed is my sense. We will see more increase on the NBFC, IFC kind of thing, even though, again, uh, the budget was light on detail, market-based financing framework to be put in place. It's a very broad statement to make. So, right. uh, but we are kind of stretching it and applying it to say that, uh, you know, those pieces are there. Really positive piece from a working capital standpoint for MSMEs was more in terms of, uh, from a trades platform perspective, adding more buyers to actually buy those SEL products. So, I think it was a very, I, I think the it was a very largely MSME focused budget and uh, uh, to a great extent uh, uh, from a populist standpoint, whenever somebody touches personal income tax, you know that they are pandering to, uh, uh, you know, no, I wouldn't say egos, but yeah, it's a coalition government. So kind of having that populist measure is important. And, Do you feel uh, some states were preferred over others? Oh, of course, of course, there was certain it was uh, it was very much evident in terms of whoever were the key parties who basically supported the coalition government or were also, uh, you know, the level of detail that is offered that was offered with respect to the investments in those states. That's a little, you know, it, it's not usually the case in a budget so that you right. know that it was it was also an important posturing from a coalition standpoint. Uh, uh, but those were, you know, those were some thoughts. Uh, nothing covered on insurance. I was really 
yeah, I was really surprised. They had nothing covered on uh, regulatory framework around artificial intelligence. The economic survey, you know, spoke so much about it. And there is an impact on skilling. So, you know, from that standpoint, so I was expecting some bit of inputs there from a AI standpoint. But these two things, I was hopeful that we'll hear something, but I didn't. So those sure. are just the quick thoughts from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivek. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Abhishek Mittal, who's joined us over here. He's the partner at Avishkar Capital. Um, Abhishek, if you can throw light on a lot of uh, agricultural uh, you know, reforms that have been announced today uh, in the budget and, you know, how the farmer has become the center of uh, uh, importance and particularly how a lot of, it was a very agricultural centric budget in some sense, I would say. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, thanks, thanks, Ritu. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so in particular, see, Avishka, uh, from an Avishka's perspective, uh, uh, agriculture is a major See that any government is focused more on getting uh, losing your, uh, Can you guys hear me now? Yes, better. Yeah. So, uh, so as I said, like you know, for us, our agriculture is an important focus area, and uh, uh, the good to see that government has you know made a lot of change around, actually around increasing self reliance, uh, uh, make, uh, encouraging more investments into food processing, etc. So that's a, that's a big positive. So around, you know, uh, so there was some talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, promoting creation of, you know, some hundred odd climate resilient crops, which essentially is talking about, you know, uh, uh, increasing self-reliance, reducing uh, focus on imports, etc. for food sector. So that's a positive. But broadly, on, uh, uh, from, a, you know, from an Avishka perspective, you know, so there are three focus areas that we look at. One is agriculture, clearly. Uh, uh, I'm actually not an expert to speak on agriculture. My fund typically looks at SME financing and uh, you know, I would love to give my two minutes into that. There's a lot of focus area around, you know, doing excessive credit to MSMEs. So one being essentially, you know, uh, more credit guarantee schemes. There was once uh, talk about, you know, using of alternate uh, credit underwriting models. And as we said, there's a lot of talk, you know, there's no, it's, it's light on detail. So we really don't know what it essentially uh, it, uh, boils down to. Uh, but from an MSME perspective, uh, then, you know, uh, extension of PLI to a lot more labor-intensive sectors, right? So I would say, uh, you know, generally from a budget perspective, I think this time they could hear a lot more talk on the manufacturing side and job creation rather than what earlier used to be a lot more agri -fooker. I have to compare it historically. I think the focus on agriculture was a, a bit less as compared to earlier years. Uh, for me personally, from a fund perspective, you know, this, this, these are huge positives. Uh, given that, you know, the focus on extending, making sure the credit, you know, the MSMEs, which are essentially running, uh, you know, which is essentially the in economic engine, you know, they are well funded. So, we're losing you again, uh, Abhishek. I, I don't know where the the voice uh, is a bit of an issue. Can you hear me? So, essentially, strengthening institutions like SEPI. Uh, another thing on uh, uh, which Sandeep talked about is uh, climate taxonomy for us. You know, given we are an ESG focused fund, uh, the key thing to note is that there are not many large economies which have a taxonomy for climate finance, and it's, it's a big step. Uh, also, given that you know the uncertainty around U.S. elections, we don't know where U.S. priorities will change over the next six months. Uh, you know, after EU, India would be one major economy after EU, Canada, and uh, South Africa. Uh, to have develop uh, a taxonomy for climate finance, which means that in India stays committed to this thing. Uh, so that's that's one interesting. Once again, you know, details need to be seen. So from us, uh, from Avishka Capital, especially from Avishka Credit perspective, which you know, which is a piece I represent, the focus on SME financing and uh, and climate are two big positives. So I, I couldn't give you a bit on agriculture because I was focused on what what really matters to me. No, no, totally understand. And I think we have Sanjay uh, Borkar here from uh, Farm uh, farm Equipment and uh, he's Farm ERP and uh, he can probably throw more light on uh, what what are his thoughts on agriculture-friendly budget. Okay, probably he's not around. Uh, so can I jump on to... Um, sorry. Oh, Sanjay, okay, you're hi. there. Great. Yes, hi. hi. I got locked. I don't know why, but thank you. Thank you for allowing me. Uh, uh, the major, major points which I found in today's budget, because at Farm ERP, we promote technology for agriculture. 
we have a platform and we promote it for farmers as well as agri businesses what i found that uh, the budget has touched climate resilience which is a very very important topic wherein they are putting in research on uh, budget on uh, the crops which are climate resilient which is a need of an art uh, plus uh, they have put in the focus on digital public infrastructure for agriculture which is i think uh, promote promoting technology uh, for the benefits of farmers and agri culture as a whole in the country would be useful uh, it is uh, with help of states which they are promoting <clears throat> i think they are uh, covering uh, digital crop surveys for around uh, 400 districts which will uh, cover around 6 crore farmers this will typically help in stabilizing the agricultural prices uh, for the commodities uh, where it is covered to because it will give you an idea what is going to come out of that region as a yield and could help in uh, stabilizing the prices to certain extent not fully unless we have all every uh, infrastructure digitally mapped this is not possible and the third important point which i found is uh, they promoting food safety so they creating the food safety labs around 100 food safety labs are being uh, put and uh, along with that uh, they covering 1 crore farmers uh, to promote uh, the natural farming so there is a budget allocated for this so overall it looks positive uh, uh, even one more important focus which they have kept is uh, improving the vegetable supply chain so they are promoting uh, the fpos startups cooperatives which will collect uh, store as well as market the vegetable so they are improving the vegetable supply chain so that will create a lot of jobs the only uh, there are a lot of positives but the negative which i think is uh, there's no focus on ai and its use uh, in agriculture because that is something which is going to help farmers uh, in a whole to take better decisions improve on profitability productivity so they could have put in uh, more emphasis on that i think that's all from my side thank you thank you sanjay i think everybody is talking about the need for uh the inclusion of ai in the budget uh, because you know obviously it's an important step but i think they've taken sort of the other side of ai which is the unemployment that is going to arise out of it they're trying to address that particular <laughs> issue in this budget uh, but thank you sanjay i think that was very helpful i'm going to jump on to you brijesh uh, you know brijesh is um, uh, from exano capital and uh, brijesh what do you think of the budget what what did you find interesting um, what were the interesting highlights for you and what did you think did not really make uh, too much sense at this point of time so since we both handle you know public markets and private markets one particular note which we should take care is that the indexation benefits have been removed so though the long term capital gains has come down to the percentage it is the removal of indexation can impact across right from stocks bonds and also real estate so that is one thing for salary goes you know the standard deduction has increased but which is good always you know like playing to the public but the most important part you know alongside is that they're looking for overall growth so angel tag benefits you know setting up for you know for for space startups around 1000 not crores uh, then other point is credit guarantees for msmes so again for that again along with that sid b brands you know branches will be open in much more places which is which is very great uh, other part is a like ecom for ecom export hubs are to be set up which is again yeah, very very positive the most important part one more part is equalization levy is been abolished so all the ecom companies which used to you know use that so that is a very positive because that was a you know pain all around in terms of compliance and also other important part which you know i think we missed out is that on the vcc variable capital company so for for the aircraft so, in, so india today needs more airports which also means we need more aircraft so that is a very positive sign it also talked about you know easing for the shipping companies so uh, be it now today all three modes of transportation uh, the benefits are coming into play but repeat aircraft be it shipping and be it rail so which is again you know very positive if you look from a very long term infra infra set point of view so in again energy security is one of the key points which was talked about employment and skilling 
which we had, had mentioned about urban development, which is again key. Innovation R&D in some forms is again coming up. And agri-focus, you know, again, startups or vegetable supply chains, because that's the last mile where you lose a lot. That is, again, something which has been you know, addressed about the fine print we have to look into. And again, the women-led development, you know, schemes, what can come into it, because we need much more entrepreneurs uh, from, you know, here in play. So overall, and overall, you know, a lot of things happen outside of the budget, but this is an, a direction, you know, what, what can happen and what can move forward. So from an overall angle, you know, we have been trying to get all, trying to get all things in play. And in this call round, how things move, you know, is important. But having said that, addressing infra, especially the communication, travel part and communication part is a very big positive. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree. And as a woman entrepreneur, I can completely imagine, you know, for any kind of uh, any kind of SOP that is offered for women empowerment always goes a long way. Uh, even just a mention of it brings a lot of more women into the workforce uh, versus otherwise. So, yeah, I completely agree with you over there. We also have uh, Mr. Sandeep Mukherjee from uh, Be Live, um, you know, from the EV space. So, you know, how, how did you like the budget, Sandeep? Well, honestly, for us, it was a bit of a mixed bag, right? Uh, when it comes to EV, I, I think the government uh, uh, sort of sidestepped the entire uh, EV discussion, right? Uh, there was uh, there was a lot of expectation around the announcement of Fame Three uh, after Fame Two, uh, and there was an interim uh, provision which was created. Uh, there were a lot of hopes on uh, you know bringing in a Fame Three or a mention of a Fame Three, which would uh, sort of drive more affordability through certain subsidies. But I think that that was not there. Uh, well. Uh, so overall, it looks like the government is kind of focusing on the hybrid side of things and uh, maybe exploring other alternatives uh, to fossil fuel, uh, which is good in a way. Uh, but then uh, there were certain bright spots, as I would call it, uh, where uh, critical minerals, important critical minerals uh, have been exempt from taxation, so which is good news because uh, lithium being one of the key ingredients in going into batteries and uh, as we know that 30 to 40 percent of the battery of the cost of the ev is the battery right so if if we can successfully bring down the cost of the batteries that would lead to overall reduction in cost make evs more competitive and probably drive adoption right so so indirectly the government has sort of given a, a slight boost uh, in that manner another another thing which i welcome was uh, creation of skilled uh, skilled labor force uh, evs as we see is a growing industry but uh, there is a scarcity of skilled manpower in the uh, in the, so that part is Increment or in EV management, obviously, uh, will work towards making EVs much more mainstream, right? So, uh, I think it was a bit of a dampener for those in the EV industry. We were expecting a bit more. Uh, there was nothing on the on the charging infrastructure side, and uh, there was a huge expectation that. Uh, unless you have strong investments in creating public charging infrastructure, driving adoption of electric vehicles will always be a challenge, right? So along highways and uh, government has to significantly contribute and participate in developing public charging infrastructure, right? So I guess hopeful that uh, eventually there'll be a lot more that will be coming up, but uh, sort of a 50-50 for electric vehicles. Sure. And I think also the fact that, you know, we could have seen more SOPs for battery manufacturing happening in India because Absolutely. obviously it's more centric still in China. And we would like Absolutely. to see more batteries actually being manufactured really? in India, some work done towards it. Um, you know, on, on a larger front, do you think, I mean, while we've seen, you know, the, the markets heating up, 
uh, the, we've seen, you know, markets going berserk during elections, after elections, I mean, you know, an all time high. But the fact that, you know, now there is a long term capital, uh, short term capital gain tax, which is also being put on the markets, do you think? And it it also brought a lot of entrepreneurship into the whole uh, system, you know, a lot of people who were probably just sitting out of home and making uh, good buck from the uh, uh, from the, uh, the, the capital markets uh, was there. But I mean, the, the budget sort of doesn't sort of play out to it in terms of helping people, you know, or encouraging people to make more investments in the stock market. So any any thoughts on that, anyone? Maybe I can answer here. Yeah. I think there are two elements of the budget, the three elements of the budget. The first is if you look at uh, almost all implications are meant to stay invested for longer window. The second is arbitrage and FNO, etc. as tax, which means that riskier proposition the government is pushing not to invest too much in, right? which means middle India has been pushed to devote more money for longer term. Uh, and the third element here is coming is, um, if you look at the way the tax slobs are based, it's actually saying, even if you're not saving, it doesn't affect your tax benefit. The section 80C is in a way diminishing. So in a way, the push the government is trying to do is invest for long-term gain creation, not for tax benefit or for shorter term uh, cash flows and cash flow advantages. So I think that's the messaging uh, is coming out more and more. I think if you look at over the last few years, the same messaging is holding true. We want participation coming from a larger public, but we want them to hold money for a longer window rather than short-term gains. Sure, but... I mean, you know, honestly, how much can you control it? I mean, there's going to be all kind of players who will enter it. But uh, I just feel that at this point of time, you know, retail investors who were sharply coming into the system might just want to put their investments on hold, uh, which may not be very good for the stock market overall, um, considering the number of IPOs that are lined up in the mid-market space as it is. Um, uh, you know, on the other hand, do you think that there is some sort for the real estate sector? We've seen some, um, you know, some addressal being made towards urban crisis and, you know, uh, housing crisis and uh, some affordable housing being uh, sanctioned in the budget. Do you think it is going to sort of lead to some kind of, and honestly, the real estate sector has not been acknowledged at all for the last few years and suddenly we're seeing this coming. So do you feel uh, somewhere the government is again warming? up to the real estate sector. Okay. See, I can address from one point, which is what, you know, if I remove the inefficient benefits, the tax liability will definitely go up. So that that so that is where something which should come into play. What is the impact? What is the amount? You know, don't want to guess. Uh, and alongside that, when you talk about, you know, the prices of real estate, if you have been in the top tier cities, it, it's been crazy out there. So some consolidation right. will come. And affordability, you know, what what do you mean by affordable housing? So someone a tire to one and tire two, you know. And if you're saying affordable housing, it also has to come along with the infra which comes with it, which is where it is lacking. So along with affordable housing, you know, you know, the infra around that, surrounding that also needs to be, you know, core part. So this is only the what future will, you know, come into play. That's where you know my take on the whole thing is. And what kind of uh, sort of on the whole, what kind of uh sort of forecast do you make for the solar energy sector in the country? I mean, given the fact that the government has been even before the elections to now, during the elections and now also the government is focusing on the adoption of uh, solar energy. So what what sort of how, what will be the impact on the industry at large? So if I can say from personal experience in, 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 in the houses who are, uh, no, who are who have own houses? Uh, they are actually generate. They actually are looking for for this. They are actually trying to install the things. Uh, if it is also extended to you know the large you know, societies which are there, they are in the tier one, tier two cities. Also, you know, this could act. You know, this can positively act big time because I know for sure, like in 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 developed countries like UK, you know, the, this is being uh, put forth in a very positive manner.